Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining today and special thanks to Florence and Helen for organizing us. It's a pleasure to be with you all. Um, I'm here to talk about our project on the effects of COVID-19 on household energy and security. This is collaborative work with Sonia Carley, who's also a professor here at Indiana University, as well as two of our PhD students, Michelle Graff and Trevor Mehmet. Uh, in addition to having funding from NSF, we have support for this project from the Sloan Foundation as well as from Indiana University. So the place to start, I think, is with what is energy and security, right? And it's, it's a simple idea. It's the idea that um, it's sort of a condition where households are unable to afford to pay uh, to meet sort of their basic energy needs, right? So think about electricity or natural gas or heating oil. And we've come to rely on these as critical services. Think about charging our electronic devices, increasingly e-learning, right? Requires access to electricity and Wi-Fi networks, keeping our food um, fresh and, and nutritious. Um, a lot of folks rely on electricity for their med for medical needs, right? Uh, folks rely on electronic medical devices, for example. And of course, there are heating and cooling needs. There's a tremendous amount of things for growing research showing that households that are unable to meet their basic energy needs suffer from a whole set of physical and mental health effects. So it's folks who are unable to sort of meet their energy um, suffer from a, a whole set of adverse effects, which we should be concerned about. In this project, we're trying to uh, answer a few research questions. First is how prevalent energy and security is at the household level in the United States. And of course, in particular, how the COVID-19 pandemic has made it worse. Uh, we're interested to know who suffers the most from energy and security, what factors lead households to be more or less energy insecure. And then finally, what are the implications for households when they do become energy insecure and how do they cope with that? So to answer these questions, what we've uh, done with this project is um, conduct a longitudinal survey of low-income households in the United States. So this is a four-way panel survey of a nationally representative sample of low-income households. And what that means um, uh, specifically are households that are at or below 200% of the federal poverty line. And to give you a sense of what that means for a family of four, those are households that are earning $26,000, uh, $26,200 or less uh, in a year, and that was as of 2020. And what we've done is conduct this uh, a panel survey where we're gonna track these same households over time, over sort of a year um, during the duration of the pandemic. We sort of think about the beginning of the pandemic as when the economic disruption uh, began, right, around March of, of 2020. And we're going to check in with these households periodically over the subsequent year. So the first wave of our survey was at the very end of April, beginning of May 2020, and it was of about 20, almost 2,400 households. We then went back into the field um, to the same households in August of last year, and we had a, a, a sample of about 2,200 uh, people. We went back again for a third time in January, um, and our sample um, is still quite large. It's almost 1,700 people, and we are about to go into the field for our final wave uh, next week. Um, so we're very excited to get the fourth wave of our survey. What we're trying to do in the survey is capture people's experiences with energy and security to measure it and to identify um, how they're coping, what sort of the implications are for, for them. So what I'm gonna do today is just share with you a few set of results, mostly from the first wave of the survey. Uh, the first question we have is how prevalent energy insecurity is, and we're measuring that in three ways, whether or not uh, a household could afford to pay an energy bill uh, in, in uh, at least one month or in all months, I should say, uh, over the course of both the past year, so the year prior to the pandemic beginning, and then in that initial month of the pandemic. Uh, a second measure is whether or not people who could not afford to pay an energy bill receive a shutoff notice from their utility. And then third, whether or not they were actually disconnected from their service. And what you can see here is that um, if you go back in a year's time, you sort of think about this as sort of pre-pandemic levels, um, about a quarter of our sample were unable to pay an energy bill in at least one month during this period of time. And a similar percentage were unable, or sorry, received a, a disconnection notice um, because they were in arrears. About 11% of our sample actually lost their service at some point in the prior year. Now, what's interesting is you can look at just the initial month of the, of the, when the pandemic sort of hit and we had the economic disruption, all the stay-at-home orders were in place, for example. Um, 
that there was a very large proportion of those who had lost, who were sort of unable to pay the energy bill, that occurred to them in, in April and May of 2020, right? Um, so about 12, 13% of our sample were unable to pay that particular bill during April or May. Um, similarly high numbers for those who received disconnection notices and you know, about five, 6% actually had their service disconnected during that first month of the pandemic. We can sort of take these estimates from our survey and extrapolate out to the population, give you a sense of how many people this affects. And as you can see here, we're talking about millions of households and tens of millions of individuals who are affected by energy insecurity. The next thing we do is run regression analyses to identify what are the characteristics of households that are experiencing energy insecurity across, again, these three measures. Um, we do this separately for the past sort of the pre-pandemic era, sort of the past year, as well as that initial month, April, May of 2020. And just to summarize these regression results, what you're seeing here is that households who have at least one child under the age of five, um, households where someone relies upon an electronic medical device, Households that are sort of people of color, Blacks and Hispanics in particular, people, households are particularly at the low end of the income uh, perspective, and those who are living in energy inefficient house, uh, housing conditions. In both sort of, sort of, uh, from a chronic standpoint, as well as an acute standpoint, so the full year prior to the pandemic and this initial month, all of these characteristics are positively predicting uh, households that are um, experiencing energy insecurity across the three measures that we're looking at, right? So they're all more likely on average to uh, not be able to pay an energy bill, um, to receive a shutoff notice from their utility, as well as to get disconnected. The next thing we look at is sort of COVID specific um, shocks that people, the households may have suffered. So controlling for all those factors, which I just um, uh, talked about, we separately measured the degree to which people felt personal economic hardship as a result of the pandemic, whether or not they lost employment hours, whether or not they actually had COVID or COVID-like symptoms. In all these cases, what you see is that even controlling for income and race and, and you know, housing conditions, the effects of COVID and the economic dislocation that resulted further put people into a precarious situation relative to their energy needs. One kernel of good news is that people who receive their COVID relief checks tend to do better, right? So that influx of cash assistance that people receive from the federal government allowed them to be more energy secure. And finally, just to sort of give you a sense of what we've learned in sort of the subsequent waves of the survey, um, we look at waves two and three. What we find is that, um, generally speaking, results um, are very stable, very similar, which is to say energy security has sort of continued uh, through you know, the first six, nine months of the pandemic. Uh, we did see an increase of the prevalence of energy insecurity during the summer of 2020, but a bit of a diminishment uh, in the fall, but racial ethnic income disparities remain. And uh, we further have sort of evidence showing that people who are able to access government services tend to do a little bit better. So that's a key, uh, a key policy intervention to alleviate some of the energy security that we see. So I will leave it at that. Thank you all very much. If you're interested more in the study and our work, please contact me. We have um, results from the survey up on this website here, and I'd be happy to share more about our work. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.